As American hospitals brace for the worst-case scenario, preparation and prevention now becomes top of mind. Meg Terrell is back for more on this side of the story. Meg. Well, hi again, Brian. The case number, of course, in the United States remains at 12. But if that number does rise, hospitals say they're ready. While health officials emphasize the risk of the novel coronavirus to the U.S. public is low, they say the goal is to keep it that way. And we expect to continue seeing more cases here. Hospitals are on alert. At Mount Sinai Health System in New York, Dr. Bernard Kamen said preparation began at the first word from the CDC of a new infection in China. It's a mantra that we always repeat is uh, identify, isolate, and inform. Screening patients for their travel history is key. If they've been to China and they have symptoms of, of coronavirus, which is very similar to the flu, then that would trigger the healthcare workers to isolate that patient. In the event of a possible coronavirus case, healthcare workers would don personal protective equipment, a gown, special face mask, a face shield, and gloves. As for how people should protect themselves in their everyday lives, Dr. Kamen says it's a lot like avoiding the flu. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid those who are sick and stay home if you are. And try not to touch your mouth, nose, and eyes. And Brian, it turns out a lot of us aren't even washing our hands properly. 20 seconds. You can sing happy birthday two times through to try to time yourself. That is a good thing. Oh, Meg, thank you very much. Stay here. Stay with us. I'm bringing another special guest. That is Dr. Amy Compton Phillips. She is chief clinical officer of Providence, overseeing 51 hospitals in seven states, including the one which treated and then ultimately discharged the first U.S. patient diagnosed with the coronavirus just north of Seattle. Uh, Dr. Compton Phillips, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC. At the beginning of the show, we had former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb, who thought that it would get worse in the United States rather than better in the coming weeks. Would you agree with that? Do you anticipate that there will be more cases soon? We're definitely planning for that. You know, the incubation period can be up to 14 days. And so it took a little while to sort out that we had people who were at risk for developing the infection here in the U.S. And so it's going to take a little while for us to peak our incidence here. So, yes. And so what types of preparations are you making? Well, everything you all have already talked about. Um, so we have been screening every patient that comes to us for travel history because um, it is during flu season. And so we're seeing lots of people with the symptoms of cough and fever and shortness of breath. Um, but screening for travel history, early isolation, um, making sure we have what we call negative pressure rooms available so that um, when if we do have to mm -hmm. isolate a patient, it's not only protective equipment, but having air handling systems so that um, like that woman on the cruise ship was talking about. About, you know, that that if the germ does get in the air system, it, it could be a problem on places without negative pressure. We have air systems that ensure isolation. Um, and Do also, Doctor, let me jump really, in. I just want to ask a couple yeah. more quick questions at the time we have, which is number one, what did you learn about the virus from treating that first U.S. patient? What are we dealing with? Every patient that we have, we're upping our game in knowledge, um, and that's because every virus has its own course. What we're learning is that the initial early mild symptoms can get worse, and so we really need to keep our eye on patients for longer than um, other common viruses. You also made a decision to use uh, an experimental drug to treat this patient, uh, a drug called remdesivir. Um, tell us about that decision and what you can conclude uh, just from this one patient on how well that drug worked. Well, I'd hate to make any conclusions based on one patient, but I can say that when patients with the flu um, start getting worse instead of better, they start getting lung complications, viral pneumonia, um, we have antiviral drugs that we can use. The antiviral drugs for the flu don't work for the coronavirus. And so when this particular patient started getting worse, we were seeking a novel antiviral agent to treat this new germ. Um, and that's how we ended up with, with the experimental drug we did use. What is the fact that common flu medication not working tell you about the strength and the resiliency of this virus, doctor? It's not about the strength. It's about um, that each, each individual infection requires its own agent. And, you know, not every antibiotic works on every bacterial infection. Not every antiviral works on every antiviral infection. So we've got to find the right drug to tailor it to the specific infection. Mm -hmm. 